We're going to wrap up this unit talking about free fall. So this video is on free fall. And the conditions for free fall are that something is falling through the air or something is really, so this is, it can, let's just say this. The condition for free fall is that the only force acting on something is gravity. Okay. And um, we're going to say gravity near the Earth's surface because we'll talk about situations where we're far away from the Earth's surface later. Okay, and so we have to kind of make some assumptions because technically nothing is ever in free fall because there's always air. Okay, and so this we're going to do a lot of talk about scenarios that don't exist but that we can use to make approximations. So we can do all sorts of stuff talking about free fall and acceleration from gravity even though it's not true unless you're in a vacuum. And since we can never be in a vacuum on Earth, then um, the circumstances never actually occur, but they're really close to reality, and um, so we can use them to make some really interesting predictions, okay? But as we get started, some important things we need to know. This is acceleration from gravity. At this point, we've already found it, okay? Gravity always exists, it's always downward, and it's never zero. Okay, so we always have this downward acceleration from gravity, okay, and um, sometimes we'll round this to 10 just to make things a little bit easier, but it's always down, it's never zero, it's always there, okay? Now we're going to think about a scenario, um, think about what we just talked about, and think about a scenario where we're taking a ball, and we're going to throw it up in the air, let's say that we throw it up at about 20 meters per second okay actually we won't give a value okay we won't say how fast we're going and we're gonna throw the ball upward and it's gonna fly up and then eventually it's going to kinda of slow down and come back down okay and so these questions we're asking are about that and then when it asks for magnitude, for oh, this is accelerate. Okay, we're good. All right, so <clears throat> anyway, question one asks, what's the acceleration at the top of the path? When we get way up here at the very top, what would our acceleration be right there? Okay. Question two, what is the velocity at the top? So when we get up to this highest point here, how fast is the ball moving? Question three, what is the magnitude and direction of the acceleration halfway up? So as it's flying up, it gets to this point right here. What's the magnitude of the acceleration? Which way is it going? And then finally, part four, what is the magnitude and direction of the acceleration as it's coming back down right here? Okay? <clears throat> All right, so acceleration at the top. Okay, remember for one, two, three, and four, acceleration from gravity never changes always down, always 9.8 meters per second squared. It's true at the top, it's true halfway up, it's true halfway down. No matter where it is, that acceleration will be the same. The velocity at the top will be equal to zero. Okay, because when it gets to that highest point, just for an instant it's going to stop moving before falling back down. And if we were actually to graph this velocity, the velocity of this ball, it might look something like this, and you're going to see here, at that instant, that v is equal to zero. You're all going to, also going to see that it has a negative slope the entire time, never changes, constant. So we have this constant acceleration for our slope, always negative, always down, never changing. Now, as far as whether you say acceleration is positive or negative, that's actually kind of up to you when you're analyzing a situation. Because we can say whenever we like, we can say up is positive, or we can say that down is positive. Okay? Okay, so we're going to analyze this scenario now, in which we have a stone being dropped from the top of a cliff. It's going to hit the ground five seconds later. If we draw a picture, we have a rock. We're going to drop it. It's going to hit the ground five seconds later. Okay? And so, in this question, there's some things that we know. We know how long it's going to fall for, and we know 
that it was dropped okay when we drop something that's a hint that our initial velocity is equal to zero meters per second and the hint <clears throat> and since it's falling it's in free fall that tells us that our acceleration is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared okay now we have to decide which way we want to be positive we want up to be positive or down to be positive okay these things will have consequences for the results that we get we get the same values but the directions will be different so for example if we say that up is positive then since it's falling down and accelerating downward acceleration is going to be negative our velocity when it hits the ground is going to be negative and our displacement is going to be negative if on the other hand we say down is positive then all those quantities will be positive instead okay so from here we can solve for final velocity we can solve for displacement okay you can use any of the equations I'll have you just go ahead and do that real quick so go ahead and find or not necessarily real quick it might not be that quick but go ahead and find those quantities just to save us some time let's round 9.8 to 10 okay so we can make this process a little bit simpler okay so we calculate those missing quantities we find that the velocity at the end is 50 meters per second and we've traveled 125 meters if we're going to sketch some graphs for position time okay it's going to look like this okay we're going to sketch a graph for velocity time we start from zero go to positive we sketch a graph for acceleration time it's going to just be positive 10 the whole time okay now all of these graphs are flipped in the case that we set down as negative or up as positive okay so when I did these calculations I said down was positive okay and then those are the values I got you can pause it if you want to look at the work okay we'll do one more of these um, and wrap up the video after that okay so here's the next situation we have a stone that's thrown upward with initial velocity of 20 meters per second from the top of a cliff has a downward velocity of 35 meters per second when it hits the ground I want you to start by labeling the information you have and we're gonna say that for this one um, we'll say that up is positive okay and so that way your answers will be consistent with mine okay but again up or down could be positive that's up to you generally so go ahead and identify the things that we know okay so hopefully you said that the initial velocity is a positive 20 meters per second our acceleration would be negative 10 meters per second squared and our final velocity is going to be negative 35 meters per second okay notice it's negative because it's going downward now looking at the answers that we're going to get if we find these missing quantities should displacement be positive or negative and why so displacement should be negative because we end up below where we started okay and so what I'm going to have you do now is go ahead and solve for those missing values okay I'm going to show my work here as well. I'm going to use graphs to find the answers this time, and then you can use my graphs as a guide, or you can use the equations. It's up to you. Okay, so I found the missing values. Displacement of negative 41.25 meters, a time of 5.5 seconds. Um, the way that I found them was I started with the acceleration graph, and I found the um, amount of area needed to find a change from 20 to negative 35. Okay, it was 5.5 seconds that was needed for that to get that area. I also found wanted to find how much time was needed to get from negative 20 to zero for that change because I want to know on this graph when it went from positive to negative. Okay, once I did that, I went to here and I found the area of each of these triangles right here and right here so that I could find the total displacement. Okay, so this is a this particular scenario is one where it probably makes more sense to use the kinematics equations just because the amount of effort involved is much less but um, I wanted to show you that it could be done with this question so that's why I did it that way 
And um, one thing that you might have done to find displacement is use this equation. So I'm just going to substitute in here for just a quick second so I can talk about it, okay? Okay, so these might be the equations that, used to, that you had used to find displacement in time. Now the thing that I want to point out here is this. So what if we change the situation so that instead of being thrown upward, the stone was thrown downward, okay? That would change some things. That means that our initial velocity would then be negative. Okay? But this displacement just represents the height of the cliff. So wouldn't it make sense that whether we threw the ball up or down, that the height of the cliff would stay the same? Well, if you look, when this becomes negative, if we go to this equation, that this becomes negative right here, when we square it, negative 20 is going to be equal to 400, just like positive 20 squared would give you, okay? So you can see that that actually doesn't make a difference in this particular equation, okay? What it does make a difference in, though, is how much time it takes for the object to hit the ground because when this is a negative 20, that means we're adding 20 to the other side instead of subtracting, and we're getting a much smaller time, okay? Now I'm just going to real quick show you um, a graph that illustrates this. Um, and then that will wrap up the video. If we make a position graph showing the first scenario, it might look something like this. So we throw it up, and then it comes back down. Okay, where this is time, this is vertical position, we'll say. Okay, so a couple things. Remember, we know that right here at this top point, the velocity is zero, but there's something else really interesting that happens. When your displacement is zero, when you get back to your starting point, your velocity there is the same as what it was when you started right here, okay? And so when you flip this over, nothing changes except you're starting right here instead of right there. And so you can see that the amount of time has significantly decreased, but you're still ending up the same distance away from when you started, okay? And so something important to know about, about free fall is that for an object in free fall, when it returns to its starting height, it's going to return to its starting speed, but it will be traveling the opposite direction. Okay, and so this scenario right here looks similar to this scenario right here in a couple of ways, even though they're not the same scenario. Okay, and that'll wrap up this video. Hopefully it's all making sense. Please ask a question if you're confused.